Microsoft has just published a brand new, completely free foundational cybersecurity course. So, of course, we have to talk about it. Now, the course has been published on GitHub. It is completely free. It is a complete beginner level course. It is called the Cybersecurity Basics Curriculum for Beginners. Today, I want to walk you through what it actually covers and whether you should consider going through this course and going through the content. Now, I would like to say straight off the bat, one of the things that's very intriguing to me and that absolutely stands out is how much thought is going into cybersecurity content creation and course creation these days. I feel like in the past, the learning was more thought through and maybe more detailed and structured, but didn't really factor in that some people first need that kind of beginner level overview to even decide like if this is a thing for you or not. And so there were not many of those courses, which I feel like nowadays I can see a lot more good quality foundational courses and training coming out. And there's also a lot more investment from the big providers to produce the training. So today's gonna be a little bit different. I am going to talk to you over here, but then I'm also going to move over to my computer to actually run through the course and the content with you. So with that, let's jump right in. Now, as I mentioned, you will find the course on the Microsoft GitHub repo, the Security 101 repo. The course actually is vendor agnostic according to Microsoft. So it is a cybersecurity for beginners curriculum, which is very interesting. Now the course is designed to only take you between 30 and 60 minutes. So this tells me already that it is not like in depth. It is really to give you kind of a foundational overview. But what's really exciting about this one this time is that even Microsoft is saying that this course is vendor agnostic. So they're not talking about their technology at all. It's a vendor agnostic kind of learning experience. And then each lesson does have a small quiz at the end. Now, I love the picture on here, by the way. I think it's a cool, maybe co-pilot generated image or something like that. They're basically stating what the course covers, right? So it covers the foundational concepts, which is really cool understanding of what a security control is and kind of what forms they take. Not really sure what they mean by that. Understanding zero trust and the importance of it. And then some of the concepts and themes around identity, networking, security operations, infrastructure, and data security. And they give actual examples of how these tools can be used and implemented. That's really cool. It doesn't cover how to use the tools, so that tells you it's not very deep. It does not, they don't cover any hacking or red teaming activities, and then they don't cover anything that you need to learn around the maybe compliance and maybe GRC space. So we are gonna look into that. They also do say that once you've completed this course, you can move on to the learning modules for SC900, which means that they are covering topics that's at a much earlier level than what's even covered in SC900, the security fundamentals one, which I think is a good thing because SC900 kind of jumps into the Microsoft security controls, but they don't really cover security as an overview ahead of time. So I always say that if someone is brand new, you cannot generally just jump into SC900 because that's going to give you a Microsoft technology overview, but not necessarily a security overview, right? So that's something to consider. But here's the modules overview. Let's have a look at it. So the first module, they're really covering the basic concepts like CIA, the threats, the risk management components, the hmm, security based practices and documentation, the shared responsibility model. Nice. And then the buzzword of zero trust. <laughs> then we've got an end of module quiz for each one. So number two seems to go more around the identity management stuff. Three is networking or a network security. And then we go into the security operation center. So here I would expect to see things around the SOC and SIM and XDR and those kinds of capabilities. And then we go into AppSec infrastructure security, and then data security fundamentals. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And here as well, I haven't seen these courses, but they also have other courses for beginners. So it's good to see that they've moved into an overall course from a security perspective as well. All right, so let's go a little bit deeper and let's go and look at the content, right? So 
Firstly, it seems like so they're starting with the CIA triad and then it seems like they start with some video content over here. I just want to make sure the sound is off on this side so that I'm not bombarding you with a lot of sound. All right, but then... So here they do share video content. So you can see this video is about two minutes long, two and a half minutes. And this is basically Sarah Young explaining through kind of the basics of the CIA triad, etc., which is cool. I will say the CIA triad is something that you absolutely need to know. If you're a complete beginner, like one of the first things that you learn is about confidentiality, integrity and availability and how the CIA triad is applicable in cybersecurity. They also answer the common questions like what is cybersecurity, etc, etc. So overall, I would say it looks really good. It, to me, as a security professional, I always find it difficult to explain to others some of the core fundamentals and concepts because there's so much content out there around cybersecurity or information security. There are so many things to learn and I like the fact that they're summarizing it into like one repo, all of the core fundamentals and kind of the lower level information into this repo. So the next one basically, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but then they talk about the threat landscape. So they talk about really good things like the MITRE attack framework. They talk about the cybersecurity threat landscape. They talk about kind of why do malicious actors make our lives so difficult? And what the most common cybersecurity threats are. This is also super cool for you if you are going through the interview process and you're trying to figure out kind of how to answer security interview questions because these are typical questions around like what are the most common threats in cybersecurity? Like what are the threat frameworks that you will use? What are TTPs? What are the adversaries looking for? And so this can help you really understand those and get kind of a quick overview explanations of those. And then what I really like is throughout the course, they also have like links that you can use. So how do you keep up to date with the threat landscape? And then here's a bunch of links for you to use. So I think overall really, really cool. One thing that I want to do is I want to see how the end of module quiz actually looks like. So this is just for module one. I'm going to go to the end of module quiz. Let's see what it looks like. So there is about there's 10 questions in this one. Let's go through it and see. So what is not part of the CIA triad in cybersecurity? So what is part of it is confidentiality, integrity and availability. So we know reliability is not part of it. What is non-repudiation? So this is really cool because someone can ask you that in an interview. So what is non-repudiation? That's basically someone claiming that they didn't do something. So non-repudiation prevents the act of someone that claims that it is not them that did it and therefore talks to the fact that each person must always have their own unique identity. We eliminate the use of shared accounts, shared details, shared things so that we can avoid the risk of non-repudiation, right? So this really prevents someone from claiming that they didn't receive a message because that we would have evidence that it is them, it was sent to them, and they are the person that has received that message. Then which of the following are good places to keep up with the latest cybersecurity threats? I mean, all of the above, OWASP top 10, CISA, common vulnerabilities, the CVE database, I think all of them. And then TTPs are found in which cybersecurity framework? So it is definitely the MITRE attack framework, and that is tactics, techniques, and procedures. And then we have security awareness training is what kind of control? So I think it's an administrative control. All right, attacks exploit what? So they exploit vulnerabilities. And so here, if you go through this content, you can really learn a lot on how to answer these questions because this is a really good one. I mean, zero days are exploitable, but most common attacks are there to exploit vulnerabilities. And then a security baseline and a security guideline are the same thing. No, this is not true. So a baseline is a different concept to a guideline and you can learn how or why in the training, I assume. And then defense in depth means having multiple different security controls in place to protect an environment. This is true. So you'll have the layer of controls of the network, the identity, data protection, something like encryption or something like that. And then how are zero trust architectures different from traditional security architectures? So they are 
It's basically identity focused, highly segmented. Yeah, I think those are the two options that I'm gonna go for here. It's not implicitly trusted, it's not about the strong external perimeter, and it's also not that much network focus is more identity focused in when we talk about zero trust. And then in an on-prem environment, some security controls are the responsibility of the CSP. This is false because this is an on-premise environment. In a cloud environment, some controls are the responsibility of the cloud service provider, but not really an on-prem environment. Okay, now I have to see how I did because I feel like I so confidently talked through this and explained it, but I might be wrong and that's okay. So let's submit, oh, okay. Okay, that was, that was good, that was good, okay. But yeah, so you get the point of the, the training, I think. And I think you can learn quite a bit, especially if you're a complete beginner. So, what are my thoughts? Who is this training for? Should you take this training? Should you jump up, leap and go and do whatever it takes? So, my final thoughts is the training is good. If you have no knowledge about security and you want to get kind of a most basic or brief overview into cybersecurity and the cybersecurity concepts, then yes, I would do this training. It's free, it's available online, you can do it at your own time, and you can really learn in a summarized fashion of all these different cybersecurity concepts, and it even structures it into the basics and then identity and then networking, and then so you can even get into like a bit of knowledge of the different domains. If you are studying and you want a bit of a recap, I also think this training is good for you because you will get kind of the most in demand knowledge, I would say, or at a high level, you'd get knowledge about the details or the data in these different domains in a summarized fashion. And then finally, I think if you've already done beginner certifications or things like that, I don't think that you're gonna find that much value in this other than using it as a summarized version of a database of knowledge for interview prep or things like that. But I do wanna say kudos to Microsoft for continuously, like actually recognizing the need and demand, right? And for me, I don't, I mean, I don't have to say nice things. Like I get to give my input. I am, I'm, I'm an MVP, if you didn't know. So I get to give my input into some of the things they do, some of the things they build and develop, and some of the content that they write, etc. But I get to give realistic and honest feedback to them, right? I genuinely think this is good. It's a good summarized database of knowledge for you if you are on the path into learning about cybersecurity and getting certified. All right, friends, that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. And if you are on the journey to getting started into cybersecurity, don't forget to check out the cybersecurity complete roadmap that I have done. Catch you next time. Bye.